Now, when it comes to setups for gaming, I'm never really satisfied with anything for very long. So I end up changing things up every now and then. Even right now, there are things I wish I had in my gaming setup that I do not have in here. I'm really not a fan of small spaces for gaming setups, especially. Electronics need air and room to breathe, and that's not going to happen in a small and tight gaming setup. When you only have a small space to use like I do, you learn to work with it. You're always thinking of ways to make the room feel larger and a lot less cramped tough and stuffy. Okay, let's explore all the different things that make up my small room gaming setup. To the far left here, I've got two DualSense wireless controllers charging together on the DualSense charging dock. I can't tell you guys how convenient it is having this right here. I come right in, grab a controller, and then it's straight to gaming. The same convenience applies to when I'm done gaming. I set the controller down on the dock, it clicks in and it's off to charging. The next time I'm in here, everything is fully charged. I never have to worry about low battery issues, which is honestly one of the biggest things for me. One of the major perks of having two controllers for me is the ability to switch between them when I play for long hours and run out of battery power. Another good reason to have two controllers would be if you happen to play with your friends a lot. That would be uh, almost mandatory, to be honest with you. Right next to the charging dock, I've got my Giannis Antetokounmpo Limited Edition Nike Freak 1s, which I received from NBA 2K for being one of the first 200 or something like that to obtain the highest rank, or I think it was a rep system, in the popular online My Career and Park mode in NBA 2K19. The game's like a shadow of itself now, so I don't really play it as much. I've never worn it and don't plan on wearing it, but it's really special to me and I also think it looks better on display. I don't think I have the best display for it right now, but I will, you know, eventually get one. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think about these shoes. Right next to the shoes is my 3D Illusion lamp sent to me by Lampteed. It's a nice lamp that's super easy to set up and looks great in any setup, to be honest with you. The base provides a light source, which is just LED that powers the top side, creating a 3D illusion of whatever you know the design is at the top. The top side comes in so many different designs, and me being a fan of anime characters, especially Super Saiyan Goku, I went straight for that design, and I do not regret it, I'll tell you that. It livens up my game setup in tandem with all the other RGB stuff I've got here. Yeah, I'm a big fan of RGB. Thanks to all the guys at LAMT for sending this out. If you're interested in picking up one of these guys to add some life to your space, the link will be down in the description below. I wish I could do more with RGB, but I'm a little limited in what I could do with this space at the moment. Maybe in a future gaming setup video, you'll see a display of my true love for RGB. Onto the largest device in the room, my 49-inch LG NanoCell 4K TV, my price jewel. As you can see, this is not a small TV, at least not for a small room like this one. This is one of my favorite things in here. One of the coolest things about this TV is the vivid and strong colors you get in comparison to a regular 4K TV. The nano color and nano accuracy deliver natural colors for deeper blacks and contrast. This feature alone provides a very rich and colorful console gaming experience and I absolutely love it. It also has HDR capabilities if you're wondering. The HDMI ports are all HDMI 2.1 for future proofing the PlayStation 5 which has been enhanced to support HDMI 2.1 and all the goodies that come with it as well as any other device I use with it in the future. It provides up to 120Hz refresh rate for high frame rate gameplay at high resolutions, you know, say 4K, 8K or anything like that, without blurs and streaks, which is awesome for playing in performance mode in any games that allow it and playing at up to 120 frames per second in only a few games, you know, that allow it. For example, Devil May Cry or Call of Duty. I played the entire story mode of Spider-Man in performance mode and it was so beautiful to play on this TV, especially due to the fact that every color was really, really rich. Besides the fact that it's eaten up a lot of space on my desk. I absolutely love using it as my PS5 display and I wouldn't trade it for anything else at the moment. It's also got a pretty cool remote called a magic remote which has this little ball on it for easy navigation. I've elevated a TV here with a DIY stand I built to create more space by placing things in layers above each other. The first is a simple LED clock which I bought on Amazon at an affordable price to help remind me to get out of this room since there aren't any windows to remind me of the time and I never look at my phone when I'm immersed in gameplay. Trust me, I never do. I don't know about you, I don't. It basically sort of is my reminder that I have other things to do as well other than gaming. Gotta get out of this room sometimes, you know how it is. Next to it is my Amazon Echo Dot. I believe second generation, I'm not really sure. I've had this for a while now, but it hasn't broken down on me, so I've never seen a reason, you know, to upgrade it, regardless of the fact that there's now a fourth generation Echo Dot. I've also grown attached to this voice assistance, regardless of how annoying it can be sometimes, especially when it decides to randomly respond to absolutely nothing. I use it a lot for quick questions and also to control some of my smart devices. What time is it, Alexa? The time is 12.34 p.m. 
Alexa, what time is it in Northern Alberta? March 2nd, 2021 at 12.36 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. At the lowest layer, I've got the Steel Series Arctis 7P, which is still my favorite headset for the PS5 among all the ones I've tried. I would have had this on a headset stand, but I haven't quite gotten around to getting one yet. I've said it multiple times in my other videos how comfortable they feel around the ears, even after long hours of gameplay. And I'm saying it again, because they actually really feel really good. After gaming for a while, they still feel pretty good. It also exploits the spatial 3D audio feature on the PS5, making gaming even more immersive. There are lots of other things about this headset that makes it awesome, which I won't get into in this. Check out the video at the top of the screen if you want to learn more about, you know, this headphone. To the right of the layers, I've got an essential oil diffuser. You might not know or care what it is, but this keeps the room smelling good and provides aromatherapy, which is very soothing. I also love that there are different essential oil flavors that can be used with it for variety. It's a simple device to operate and also provides a calming sensation while gaming with it on. Another very inexpensive RGB piece that I love having in any room I stay in for long periods of time. Up next is the main device in this room, the Digital Edition PlayStation 5, which I have mounted vertically to conserve space and because I think it looks way cooler that way. The PS5 is a ginormous unit, but that's all for the best since it allows the system to breathe better. The PS5 is a significant upgrade from the original PS4, which is what I had before. One of the most noticeable upgrades is the speed which was the first thing I noticed on the new console after first boot. The SSD storage is the primary reason for that. The console looks really slick and works really well with the other accessories I have in here to provide that next gen gaming experience. I don't even know why we still call it next gen at the moment. It's basically current gen now. <laughs> if you want to see a video I did after using the PlayStation 5 for about three months, make sure to check out the video at the top of the screen right now. As you all might know by now, storage is an issue on the PS5 which will be changing this summer through a system upgrade as announced by Sony recently. One of the noticeable things connected to my PS5 is this white one terabyte hard disk drive. I store all PS4 games I've played and don't play as much anymore on here. I transfer whichever ones I'm currently playing onto the system to avoid slower load times and utilize the fast storage speed of the SSD in the PS5. It's always connected to the console since I consider it as my extra storage at least until the M2 storage slot inside the PS5 gets unlocked. Something else that's connected to the console is the Elgato HD 60S Plus game capture card which is only useful when I'm recording or streaming gameplay through OBS Studio or Elgato 4K utility app for my gaming channel which you can check out through the link below. If you want to learn more about setting up for live streaming with the PS5 check out the video at the top of the screen right now. Moving on from the PS5. Underneath the desk I have a nice heater for when it gets cold in here and trust me it does it's super quiet and gets warm very quickly I also have my Windows PC tower which I put together about a year ago it isn't a gaming PC if you're wondering I built it for some schoolwork occasional beat making and video editing now I use it as my main PC when I'm in here and need something to surf the web. I also use it to live stream and record PS5 gameplay videos. It's connected to the Elgato HD 60S Plus from earlier for that purpose. Back to the top, positioned right next to the PS5 is the Lapel portable monitor I use as the display for my PC. The size of this screen is about 15.6 inches and it outputs at up to 1080p at 60 hertz, which is good enough for this PC. The biggest thing for me with this is the size of space I'm saving from using this over a conventional 21 inch and above size monitor. I also have here a RGB LED mechanical keyboard which I got off Amazon. It's an okay keyboard but can be quite loud to be honest with you. I wouldn't suggest getting this if you plan on doing a lot of typing. I don't do a lot of typing on my PC in here so it fits perfectly with the aesthetic of the room or at least what I'm aiming for. The mouse is also RGB LED and just another device I bought off Amazon. The screen, keyboard, and mouse are all placed together on a large size RGB LED pad to finish off the look. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've also done a little bit of cable management with some tape behind a desk to hide ugly cable clutter. I cringe every time I see cable intertwined. To check prices of any of the items I've mentioned in this video, make sure to check down below in the description of the video. That's basically what comprises my small room gaming setup. Do I think it's the perfect gaming setup? No, but it works perfectly, especially for a small gaming setup. It looks very clean and doesn't feel crowded or stuffy. I enjoy gaming in here and I can easily game for hours without feeling uncomfortable comfortable in here. The hope is to have more space to work with in the future so I can set up something bigger and better. But until then, I'm going to keep enjoying my little setup here. Let me know down in the comment section what you think about this setup and what you would add or take out of it if you had the opportunity to. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it useful. If you did, give the video a thumbs up, hit the big red subscribe button under this video and the gold bell icon right next to it to turn on notifications. If you want to see more fun videos like this one, 
check out the video on the screen right now and i will catch you guys in my next video it's midas and i am out y'all